to the podium, Martin Brenora. Holy yeah. sweat. Holy sweat. Martin Brenora. Mr. Toastmaster, whatever your title is, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests, and judges. I woke up this morning, bless you, in a cold sweat. Cold sweat, I don't know if any of you have ever done that, but quite candidly, there was no environmental reason for it. The room that I was in was perfectly comfortable, but I was soaking, soaking wet in sweat, just dripping in sweat. A little bit confused and befuddled, I sat up in my bed, and I was in that state of a conundrum, a misunderstanding, not sure if I was asleep or awake, have you been there, not sure if I was conscious or unconscious, things were a little confusing and I had a thought, I thought, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my bathroom, I'm going to splash some cold water on my face, that'll knock the heck out of this, whatever this stupor is that I'm in, so I go into my bathroom, I turn the cold water on, I allow it to run, I hear it, and I bend down and I splash water in my face, and I'm splashing water in my face, and I look up into the mirror. <laughs> and I look, and I'm not sure who it is that I'm seeing. The hair matches the beard. The face looks similar. But who am I? Who is this man that I'm seeing, this reflection in the mirror? And so I take a step back. As I stay, take a step back, I become a little bit more conscious and a little bit more aware of where I am. And I look around and I realize that I'm going to feel, this is like a Stonehenge kind of moment, a medieval time where there's these tall, huge doors, large stone doors. They're surrounding me. There had to be eight, ten, twelve of them all around me. And they had symbols over them. And as I walked up to each door to inspect it, I was curious as to how I ended up here. What brought me here? Was I teletransported? Was there some kind of manner with which I transmuted my energy into a new form and I came here? And as I approached one of the doors, it opened. The door opened. I stepped through it. I walked through the door. And as I walked through the door, the door closed and I looked back. There was no door. The door didn't exist any longer. I had no choice but to go in the direction I was heading, which I thought was good news because I had been able to go back. I might have been back into that cold sweat that I seemed to have left with that clown head thing going on. And I looked ahead of me and there was a desk. And at that desk there was a person. They were sitting there, enthralled and entrenched and doing what they were doing. And there was a big eye over that eye feeling of information. So I walked down to that desk. And I went down to the gentleman that was sitting there. And he was busy doing what he was doing. And I said, excuse me, sir. And he didn't look up. And I said, excuse me, may I ask you a question? And he looks up at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I was curious because the hair matched the beard. I recognized the face. I knew that that was somebody that I think could at least identify with who it was that I, who it is that I am, and what it was that I was doing, and he said nothing to me. He pointed up to the eye, and he pointed down the hall. And I turned and I looked down the hall and I saw that this was the direction that I should go. So I walked down that hallway and above the hallway, at the top of the hallway, there was a big letter. It was the letter E. And E, I believe, was either for escalator. I don't know why in medieval times it was an escalator or an elevator. But I went in that direction and sure enough, as I got there, I looked and there was doorways and doorways of elevator doors. And I went to, to look at each and every one of them similarly to what I had done before. So I walked down the hall, one of the doors opened. And this felt right to me. Just, I felt like it was cold to be there. Like this was the place that I should be. I don't know how the elevator got there, but I went inside. And as I went inside the elevator, the door closed. And I turned, and there was only one button. And I pushed the button. And as I pushed the button, the elevator started to ascend. And it ascended at a very rapid pace. I don't know for how long, I don't know where I was going, I don't know how many floors, if it was one floor or a hundred floors, I have no idea. But eventually the elevator came to a stop and the doors opened. And as the doors opened, I peeked out. And as I peeked out, I saw down the hallway 
that there was another door, and I raced down the hallway. I knew this was my calling. I knew this was where I was meant to be. I absolutely was in a hurry to get there because there was something for me there. I knew it was there. And when I got down, there was double doors this time. And as I approached the double doors, they opened. And I looked inside, and there was a sea of faces. Hundreds of people. Hundreds of people. They were milling around, and as I walked into the room, as I entered the room, this place I knew I was supposed to be, everybody became quiet, and they took their seat. They must have been waiting for me. They must have known I was coming. So I went in, and I took my seat also, and I sat down, and I looked in the front of the room, and there was a man in the lecture just like this, and he had a gavel just like this, and he must have known what the heck he was doing because he had a hat just like this. And he pulled out his gavel, and he slammed it on the lectern, and he pounded it again, and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome our next speaker, Martin Benora. <laughs> Mr. <Tosman. laughs>